We're going to do our quick predictions here. I mean, listen, you can change your mind throughout that, especially Dre Cordero. I mean, he's our play-by-play yeah. guy. I'm sure that you can, you know, educate us as the season goes along. So this is just our beginning, our sort of like our gut instinct predictions to see where we want to go. So let's begin, uh, Mike LaHood, uh, with the champion. Who's winning this whole thing? And you don't need to give me a big explanation in this, nope. by the way, in the predictions. Just tell me who do you think, and then we move on. Who do you have? Uh, Inter Milan. Inter Milan Inter is... Yeah. yeah. Inter, Inter number one. Um, short, shortest explanation. I know I don't give many on this show, um, but shortest <laughs> explanation. They, they, they address the problem that they had late in the run-in, that they're, they're two-pronged horse in attack now. They have a second goal scorer outside of one of the most prolific strikers in Serie A from last season. So Romelu Lukaku is the answer. Inter, yeah. Milan, and Lukaku. Who do you have, Dre? Inter. Uh, they're, they're, you know, well-coached. Uh, they're hungry. They, they watched their rivals win last season. Mm -hmm. uh, after Inter ended a 10-year drought, Milan ended a 10-year drought. They bring back Lukaku. They've got two guys up top who can challenge for Capo Canonieri, although they'll take goals from each other. Um, so Inter, to me, looked like on paper, start match day one, the strongest team. Yeah, why do you think I'm wearing this whole thing? I'm in agreement <laughs> with you, boys. Of course, I realize, I, I realize, by the way, I've got to step up my shirt game because between <laughs> Michael and, and you uh, wearing the, the Ronaldo thing, like next, next, next time. <laughs> nah, my friend, you look good as always. Uh, all right, we have the champions. We have all predicted Inter Milan. Uh, all right, top four, though. After Inter Milan, mm. who are those other remaining three spots? Dre, let's begin with you. Who's your top four? Inter's number one. Yeah. What's two, three, and four? I'm afraid we're going to. Uh, be in agreement again, but uh, I'm going to go in Inter, Milan, Roma, and Juve, and I'm putting mm. it in that order. I see Roma leapfrogging uh, Juventus and Napoli and others uh, into the podium. Wow, Mike, I'm oh gosh, I'm I'm just Inter, yep, Roma, yep, Juve, yep, and Milan. Wow, I think Milan gets fourth. Just I, I, oof, lot, lot, of, lots to still be seen from this Milan team. I think. There's a lot of love for Joseph Aridia, though. Uh, <laughs> Put your money on Napoli, I think, right now. Is, is what yeah, I, saying. I, know, <laughs> I love it for Napoli. That's right. That's yeah. right. I, I'm in agreement, but I think mine switches a little bit. I do have Inter Milan, obviously, as we mentioned. I think that uh, I think Juventus is going to come. And mm, also, yeah. depending on what the uh, incomings come before the end of the transfer window, that could be impactful. I have Roma third mm. and AC Milan fourth i think we're all in agreement napoli's gonna really suffer through all those yeah. exits as well let's talk about uh this is an interesting one we've talked about of course immobile lukaku returning of course dusan vlahovic what can he do in his first full season for juventus uh victor osman back to being healthy who do you have as your golden boot winner mike lahood who do you have latora martinez Oh, I wow. love, I love this guy. I love this guy. I, you, you see the quality he brings for Argentina and he, he's just, he's, he's an assassin in the final third. And before it was, is he going to be a playmaker? This is his team. Lukaku's come along for the ride before it was Lukaku's team. Conte established that, but this is Martinez's team and Romelu. Come on, bud. We're going to have a fun season. That's what he's going to say. <laughs> All right. You have Lautaro Martinez, who, by the way, has Argentinian responsibility at the end of November as well. Drake, who's your golden boot winner? Yeah, I think Lautaro and Lukaku are going to score, you know, just bags of goals over the course of the season. But when it comes to who's going to win the Capo Canonieri, they're probably going to take some goals from each other and kind of level things out a little bit. Um, so I look at uh, Vlahovic uh, as mm. the guy who's most likely to challenge Immobile's crown because let's not be disrespectful to Chio Immobile. Yeah. He may not be performing for the Italian national team. Italians may not love him because of that, but he is one title after title when it comes to most goals in Serie A. Uh, and he's and still... there's no World Cup for Italy, Drake. Yeah, right. yeah. So he'll be yeah. able to rest as well. You have to, you have to remind the Italians. I'm I mean... sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm Peruvian, so I, I'm, I'm not trolling anybody. Uh, we're, we're, we're like this right now, I, so don't I, worry about that. I wasn't going to say it. I'm glad you did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sad to see Gareca not uh, resign, by the way. We'll do a it's different plot at some other time. Yeah, um, so please I think, don't make me cry. Yeah. Come on. I, I think Vlahovic there with Di Maria providing the service, with Chiesa yeah. eventually coming back. Mm. Um, yeah. If they get Memphis, it's another playmaker and goal scorer. Um, if they get Paredes, it's another guy who can drive the ball forward for them. And so I do think Immobile is absolutely in the conversation, but Vlahovic with a real point to prove um, because he was not uh, what they expected in the second half of last year. He was absolutely lights out for Fiorentina first half of the year. They got better service. They were a team that played in the opposition's half more. I think Allegri's going to have to be more adventurous, more attack-minded. But if he is that, then Vlahovic uh, has a very good shot. Yeah, I'm in full agreement with this. I think Dusan Vlahovic has a chip on his shoulder. I think mm -hmm. he wants to come to this full season with Juventus, wanting to show that he is that goal scorer that everybody remembered him at Fiorentina. I think both your points regarding El Fideo, giving more assists, etc. 
And I think that, uh, you know, a, a full campaign, a full preseason under Allegri is going to help him. And I think the World Cup will have a lot to say about this. I think that, mm. you know, it's going to be some tired legs all over the place. And even, I want to say Tammy Abraham, but I, I feel that it might just not be enough. I think Dusan Blavich also gets the golden boot not for me. All right, here's a fun one because it's Serie yeah, It's Italy. It has to happen. Berlusconi's back as well. So, you know, we're going to have extra <laughs> madness. Who is the first manager mm. who's going to get fired? Trey Cordero, who do you think? Uh, it's Cremonese's uh, Max Alvini, Massimiliano Alvini, who it's a weird thing with Cremonese because they get promoted under Fabio Pecchia and Pecchia dips. He's like, no Serie A for me, thank you. And he just takes off. Um, they couldn't reach an agreement. And that to me, you know, signals a team that is the most likely to be relegated in Serie A. Managerial change, so it's the start of a new project. Previous manager wanted nothing to do with your Serie A uh, exploits. I don't know that their reinforcements have a ton of sort of top flight uh, quality. And so it's not, you know, really an indictment on Alvini. He's just in a very difficult situation where if they're looking like a very, like as they should, a likely relegation contender at around the midpoint of the season, he doesn't make it to Christmas. I'm going to go Monza. Giovanni Stoppa, when, when you have the former prime minister of Italy, when you have a guy who he's back in Syria and you know he's going to want to stick it to his former club, AC Milan, and, and really stick it to everyone across the Italian peninsula, you know that there's going to be a bit of a circus. And when you start spending money, when there's desperate, say as teams coming up, experience things go wrong there's always a period where it gets a little tough and there's a bit of uncertainty and he starts taking more of a presence in transfer dealings and whatnot as a manager it becomes a headache and he's no stranger to pulling the trigger and saying mm, nah chow 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 so <laughs> I th- i'm gonna pick uh stopa for monza all right well I, there was a little bit of a conversation in this preview amongst three of us regarding fiorentina and how they might struggle and i i gotta say i'm not mm. completely convinced on how vincenzo italiano is going to do he did some good things with spezia but i think this is a different type of responsibility with this historic club who has already lost a key star already last season I, if they don't start well and things get going worse after that i think he could be the first one to go all right let's go to the next one By the way, the last one. Well, the relegation battle. What do you have? Who's getting relegated? And uh, we can be free with this. We can talk between, you know, (laughs) that that, you know, that 17th and 18th place. Mike Lahoud, who do you have being relegated? I'm going to just keep it simple. Uh, all three teams that got promoted. <laughs> That's what it seems like in Serie A. So you're always a safe bet. So I'm just going to keep it simple with that. So you come all up, you come go up. straight down. It's, hey, look, the, the, the Serie B, it's the elevator pitch. You come up in the elevator and it's, hey, there's champagne waiting for you. And everyone else in Serie A, outside of Celerity Tarna, good for them. They were the Hollywooders the last season, have knives behind their back ready to send you back down. So I Mike, expect all three to go right back down. Mike, Mike, hangs out, Mike hangs out with way cooler people than I do. I've never, I've never gotten champagne on the elevator on the way up. I've been asked to push the buttons. I've, never, I've, never, uh, um, I've got two of the newcomers uh, going back yeah. down, uh, Cremonese and, uh, and Leche. Uh, just as the bookies do. But then for me, Salernitana last season were such a good story because mm-hmm. they looked at, I think we would have said, you know, lock to go down at the mid at the start of the season, at the midpoint of the season, Salernitana were relegated and he pulled off the most incredible escape down the final stretch. Just genuinely impressive against tough competition and they stayed up. I don't see them doing that again. And so I'm going Cremonese Leche and Salernitana back to Serie B. I think I'm with you aside from that last one. I, again, just like I was talking about my worries for uh, Italiano, I don't know about Luca Gotti's journey here with Spezia. They could be yeah. one that finally uh, bites the dust here. But it is an intriguing battle in the relegation zone for Serie A this season, I believe. I think it's going to be about, you know, five teams that are really going to be fighting for it. But we all want Monza to stay, surely. We want, Bar- yeah. we want Berlusconi <laughs> just craziness. Just, just All these stories, Dre, that you kept telling through the preview, we need to keep them going because it's just too good. I love it so much. 